Hollow 2 doesn't seem to know what it wants to be. Environmentally and atmospherically, it seems like it wants to be a ripoff of Dead Space, but gameplay-wise, it's like a bad Serious Sam. One thing's for sure though, this game is really bad. Hey, Jarek here. And real quick, I want you to know that I'm making this video before I officially announce my YouTube membership, so I can't do the shoutouts until next week. At the time of recording this, my Red Faction 2 video hasn't gone live yet. My Half-Life Source video will go live next week. Okay, Hollow 2. This was a game I bought on sale for only $1, and I still feel ripped off. Can you believe this game usually retails for $20 on both PC and the Switch? Yeah, this game's on the Switch. In fact, I should probably mention this game was originally on Switch and then ported the PC. Now you know what we're dealing with. The PC port is not particularly good. To get the meme out of the way, there's no FOV slider, which is kind of a problem in this game because you're in claustrophobic areas. So you have a narrow FOV in a small area, that'll go well. The other graphic settings are fine. Everything that's mandatory is here aside from that. You can even turn off motion blur, thank God. What's a bigger deal though are the controls. More importantly, that you can't rebind them. The default controls are mostly okay with a few really big issues. They at least understand the control is objectively the better button for crouching. Fight me, C crouchers. But if you are used to pressing C for crouching, you're just going to end up kicking everything. And this is the most useless kick. At best, you're knocking over an enemy. At worst, you're randomly getting Tourette's. This drags your view everywhere. It's annoying. You're never going to want to kick anything, and if you're used to C for crouch, you're instead going to be kicking everything. By default, swapping weapons is the mouse scroll, which would be fine if you could bind other things to swap weapons, you know, like one, two, or three, like any other game. But instead, one, two, or three uses the syringes you can buy, which is awful. I'm just trying to swap weapons, not activate bullet time. That's a one-time use, and now I gotta buy more. On top of all this, you can't jump which would be fine. However, when you press the space button, it makes you do a 180. Yeah, you know all that muscle memory you've learned where you get surrounded by enemies and you try to circle strafe jump to the left. Instead, you just turn around so they can have it that ass. One, in a game like this, I should be able to jump. And two, I really wish I could disable this. Believe it or not, on Switch, it's even worse. There's no gyro aiming and you can't even change your aiming sensitivity. Graphically, it doesn't get any better. On the Switch, it's supposed to run at 30 FPS, but even when docked, it doesn't reach that. On the PC side, thankfully, it runs mostly fine, although occasionally I did have some awful stuttering, but this was not the norm. It mostly happened when the game was trying to load, which made me very confused. The gameplay is more like Doom. It's like, the gameplay is Doom, but they're... Oh my god. What the f***? <laughs> Where did I just go? As for the actual graphics, this is a game that will look really good in still screenshots and really bad when actually moving. These animations are terrible. It doesn't matter if it's for the enemies or for your weapons reloading. Yeah, that's apparently a reload. This is not unique to this one weapon. Every weapon reloads like this. The audio mixing is also terrible. The music will drown everything else out. You have to turn it down. Let me, hold up, hold up. Turn that down. Oh, what a time to pause the game. Okay. Uh, let's turn it, let's put the music volume down to that. Let's see if I can actually hear things. You get away. Even with the music turned down, you won't be able to hear the dialogue for some characters anyway. Is there subtitles? That is a good question. Wow, okay, never mind. It, those are your subtitles. They clearly are not made for 1440 resolution. <laughs> that is not helpful. Let's find somebody and see what's going on. Also, his voice is way too quiet. But to counteract all this, some enemies are obnoxiously loud. Do you like it when people moan in your ear? If you don't like that, then you better not wear a headset. Now, you've probably wanted to point out that these environments actually look pretty good. There is a lot of detail in this space station with decent lighting and good reflections. The problem is that everything is static. It does not feel like a real world. Video games are an interesting medium. 
In a movie, you can't grab the camera and turn it around to see the world you're in. Video games are a unique medium because they take you to the next level of immersion. This is why once people try VR out with proper PC VR and a game that's a real VR game, they understand it and they get hooked. It is next level immersion. And with next level immersion, you get next level environmental storytelling. You are fully able to explore the environment, pick up anything, try to piece together what happened here, who lives here. In this case, you would assume that Hollow 2 wants you asking the questions of why is this spaceship abandoned? Why are there mutants everywhere? What happened? What is this spaceship? Is it a mining ship? Is it a colony? What's going on? Instead, the story goes in a very different direction. It entirely focuses on your dead ex-wife who apparently lives in your head. Oh my god, I cannot begin to describe how much I hate this character. Ooh, look at all those gadgets. Ooh, improvements. Eight gets in. Oh, just so many goodies in there. I don't know if we're sharing the same excitement, but now things will be even more fun. I mean, just think of the possibilities. Slow motion effects. Bullet time. Oh, so cute. They remind me of our children. How do you remember them? Oh, they're almost as cute as these little sweeties. Oh, oh, that's right. How insensitive of me. You don't remember a thing. I'm so sorry. Oh, maybe I have amnesia too. Don't be mad, sweetie. Quite literally, every single room, you are going to be hearing multi-minute long dialogue sequences from this awful character. This goes beyond bad voice acting. This is straight up cringy. It sounds like Gearbox humor written by a Karen obsessed with minions. I have finally found a game with voice acting worse than Rogue Warrior. And not only is it worse, like with Rogue Warrior, it was so bad you wanted to listen to how insane it could be. In this game, you just want it to stop. I cannot stress this enough. It is the worst part of this game. It made me want to mute it. Anyway, you remember how I said they focus on this character as the main plot device? Well, at one point they actually acknowledged that the main player might want to know what happened on this spaceship, and this is how they explain it. No, you just have a brain reset. Every four hours because of polluted air. And you have absolutely no idea what happened here. You know, back when the whole crew went mad and crazy because of the pollution. Honestly, you should have been there. It's a great time. People killing each other. Crazy fellows walking around like zombies in dark corridors. Because Mark... You're the savior, because you appeared and, you know, you wanted to save me. And instead you got fucking brainwashed by pollution. What a complete and utter failure. Why would you do that? We were fucking divorced. It's so pathetic. Yeah, a couple of throwaway lines and that explains the entire ship. It doesn't give any more detail than that, that's just it. And there's nothing to find in the environment, there's no journals or codex entries or even anything to pick up, everything is static. It's all just set dressing, that's it. So then, what about the gameplay? Well, like I said, the environment makes you think that this wants to be dead space, and the mutants definitely look like they have that energy to them. However, the gameplay plays more like an awful Serious Sam game. Every single room is basically way too many enemies spawning in and you have to sit there and kill all of them before you can move on. There is no pacing, there is no downtime, it's just this over and over and over again. It makes it a lot worse because every enemy is exactly the same. They look quite different and you think I would be able to go over each and every single one of them, but all they do is just bum rush you. That's it. They will even try to just run at you through walls, and you will see this a lot. If a door closes, they'll just run into the door and clip through it. You don't need to prioritize any enemy, just circle strafe and shoot at them until they die. They're all the same. And for that matter, why do enemies even spawn in? At the beginning of the game, it shows that you released all the enemies out of these pods. This led me to believe that these were the previous occupants of this spaceship that had been turned into mutants, but then they just spawn in out of nowhere every fight, so... Okay, what was the point of that story building? It literally meant nothing. It's like they started to make an attempt to make the spaceship make sense and then immediately gave up. Anyway, occasionally mini bosses will spawn in and again, you treat them like any other enemy. Okay, new boss. Three, that does that. There we go, this does that, that's what I was looking for. He is being pushed back, I think. I don't know if I'm doing any damage to him or not. Oh, I guess I was doing damage to him. He died. Come on. It's not that hard. What killed me? How did I die? 
Meanwhile, actual bosses are pretty hit or miss. For example, this spider boss is pretty awful. It gets stunlocked so easily that it will literally never be able to attack you before you kill it. But then there's this huge nest boss that has weak spots that you need to shoot, and this isn't revolutionary or amazing or really that fun, but at least it's a functional boss, so I'll give them that. What's less functional are your weapons. Most of them are completely useless. The first weapon you get is a weak pistol. This functions as your infinite ammo pistol in case you run out of ammo with any of your other weapons. The second weapon you get is this plasma rifle of sort, and it invalidates every other weapon in the game. Its default firing mode is full auto, its secondary firing mode is like a shotgun. This does so much damage and is so easy to use that you will use nothing else, which is a problem because it is the second weapon you get in the game. The third weapon you get is a buzzsaw and they managed to make it bad. Its default mode just revs up like you would expect. This does absolutely no damage. You'll just take damage trying to use it. Its split function is pretty neat, so it actually sucks that this thing isn't so good. If you hold down left click and then press right click, it will launch the saw blade. If you release right click, the saw blade will come back to you and that is pretty cool, but it does such low damage that you're never going to use it. Right click will launch a remotely detonating buzzsaw explosion. I don't know why, it's kind of out of place for what weapon this is, but I did get some use out of it when I ran out of ammo for my plasma gun. The next weapon you get is a railgun and it functions like a railgun would. It's honestly not terrible, but again, just not as useful as the plasma gun. Its split function is kind of terrible. It shoots lightning out at enemies in every direction in front of you, but it does such little damage that it's just not useful. And then the last guns you get are dual wielding pistols, and this serves literally the same function as the plasma gun, but does way less damage, so you have no reason to use it. In between loading zones is this shop. The currency you use for the shop is dropped when you kill enemies, and you get so much that you will literally never run out. Which I guess is a good thing because the shop is how you get ammo. So just completely refill your ammo when you get here. But there's four options above your ammo. Those four options are buying medkits. You can buy one or three at a time. So two of those options are just medkits. And then there's two syringes. The description for these syringes really don't help you figure out what they do. What is this description? Your shooting and weapon usage skills increase for some amount of time. What does that mean? Does it mean I do more damage? Does it mean I have a higher rate of fire? Does it mean I move faster? Like, what What does this mean? That is not an explanation. Anyway, this first syringe will give you infinite ammo and you don't need to reload for a short period of time. And the second syringe gives you incredibly janky bullet time. It feels less like slow-mo and more like your animations just got sped up. This head bob is kind of out of control, but whatever, I guess that's useful if the game wasn't incredibly easy. I died twice the entire game. The first time you already saw, very unexpectedly. The second time I also couldn't have predicted and wouldn't have been able to avoid. Oh my God, the screen flash, did you see that? Oh, that was what? Easy. You were always weak. Okay. Sure. Wow, they can't even give you the common courtesy of giving you a checkpoint by the boss. You have to walk way the f*** over there to do it again. Now this game does try to mix up its combat a few times, and it does that by giving you a freaking mech, and by making it incredibly boring somehow. So, buckle up, I have another surprise for you. Okay, it's the vehicle section? A mining mech! Ta-da! And as a special bonus, I have prepared just for you a horde of enemies that are trying to kill you! Do you enjoy the show? I know oh I my would. god. Yep, this is the whole segment where you use a mech. That's it. Left click is a drill, right click is an overhead swing. You'll never use the overhead swing, you'll just hold down left click and walk at enemies. The mech has so much health you cannot die, so all you're doing is just this until the enemies stop spawning and you can continue. To make things even worse, the second time you get into a mech, it's literally the same thing again. This is a different part of the spaceship, mind you, but no. Same exact map, do it again. It was boring the first time, it's boring now. To make things even worse, right afterward, the game broke on me. I wandered around here forever trying to figure out what to do. In the top left, it tells me to search the warehouses, so I figured there was something I had to press E on in here, but nope, the game literally just didn't load what it was supposed to load. So I clicked the restart option, which is incredibly vague. Restart what, the entire game? Load from last checkpoint? What does this mean? Apparently it means load back to before the mech fight, damn it. Needless to say, this game is not a good game. Even for $1, you should not buy it. Its only redeeming factor is that it's only two hours long. And that 
should sum up Hollow 2. Reminder that YouTube memberships are now a thing and you can get early access to my videos and weekly shoutouts. And a huge thanks to everyone that joined me over on Twitch while I streamed this game. It actually was quite fun to stream such an awful game while talking to all of you. Check the link in the bottom right if you want to follow over there. And also look at the bottom left if you want to check out my Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.